Hello and welcome to Informally Formal. Shams Mahmood is uh, in the boards of many companies and institutions, including being the Vice President of Bangladesh Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry. He's uh, the Managing Director of Shasha Denim's immediate past president of Dhaka Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Welcome back to you, Shams. Thank you so much, Mr. Hakim, for having me here. Our today's topic is going to be uh, about backward linkages, the importance of it, why do we need backward linkages, what does it mean to begin with, and uh, what can uh, the business community as well as the government do in terms of policy reforms to allow to foster backward linkages for our industry. So first and foremost, uh, Shams, uh, help our audience understand what, what does it really mean when people say backward link with linkage or backward linkages um, and then we'll go from there. Thanks. Thank you, um, Mr. Hakim. Uh, actually, this question is a really important question and it's really uh, the magnitude and the importance of the backward linkage industry in the overall scenario, especially of the RMG and textile sector in Bangladesh. It's tremendous. Simple example is when you're buying a pair of jeans or a t-shirt, uh, the garments industry, they just stitch it. They, they cut the fabric and then they follow some designs given by the buyers or if it's an in-house design, they design in a similar way and the size sets and everything is done according to the buyer's choice at the export destination and then we export it, which you see in the stores, uh, like when you're buying clothes. But before this, the fabric from which the clothing item was made. Uh, so that's one part of the backward linkage, one industry, one, one step behind. And the fabric industry also uses yarn. Uh, there are many types of yarn, like uh, there's cotton-based yarn, there's uh, polyester-based yarn, there's recycled yarn, uh, different uh, like man-made fiber, uh, then environmentally friendly fiber, like there are fibers which are made from eucalyptus tree barks. So uh, a different, uh, lots of yarns are there. So you have uh, before the final product, garments itself, like uh, yarn from somewhere. And also, you know, in uh, the clothing, you see buttons, there are buttons, there are uh, different labels. So all these industries which supply to the ultimate garments for export, uh, they are considered as, as a bad foot linkage. Right, very, very well explained indeed, uh, Shams. So very simply put, I guess, uh, uh, backward linkage for any industry would be their uh, their relationship with the suppliers, their suppliers, are their backward yeah. linkage, right? But this is just one part, like this is in the manufacturing sense, but there are also other industries which are considered a backward linkage. For example, the service industry, like, uh, you know, uh, the consultants who uh, give me inputs on running the ETP, uh, their chemical suppliers. So there are uh, other things as well, uh, like uh, energy auditors, uh, they're also part of this backward linkage industry to a sense, but they're providing a service, not the no. uh, physical product. Absolutely, absolutely. It could be anything, any input that goes into a manufacturer or a service provider, any uh, thing that they do not do, that they rely on their suppliers, is their backward linkage. Exactly. Right? So, okay, now, how far have we come in establishing backward linkages and what else is left? what we ought to do. Over to you, Shams. So the story of Bangladesh, especially the textile and RNG sector, uh, it goes back in the 60s. Everything started with this first export, which was done by a very small unit called Riyaz Garments. Uh, it was the first export order in Bangladesh. But during that time, it was a pretty haphazard way of doing business. Uh, the, uh, they were the pioneers. But then in the 70s, we saw the emergence of Desh Garments, which was well-structured land uh, garments industry, the first structured planned garments industry in Bangladesh. And that gave birth to the industry as we know, uh, we see all around us today. Uh, also, similarly, uh, a lot of factors have fueled this growth. Uh, number one is uh, a very uh, focused policies, enable uh, enablers, uh, which was designed by the government of Bangladesh to support this industry. And also, uh, the entrepreneurs saw that there was some demand, there were some gaps in the supply chain where they filled in. And that's how the emergence of the backward industry came. So for example, like uh, we have come a long way 
like like as you mentioned earlier everything was imported like you had entrepreneurs going to hong kong in the 80s coming back with suitcases full of labels buttons zippers and then uh, almost 100% of the yarns would be imported from china from india from pakistan uh, before uh, even in the 90s it was pre- uh, very dominant like these three countries played a very dominant role indonesia uh, even philippines uh you know we saw a lot of uh, things being bought from there uh, fabric was imported almost 100% then in the 90s we started seeing like you know a shift in change like it started with the knit industry the knit industry uh, uh because they used to cater mostly to the us market they saw that if they made the fabric themselves uh, instead of just cutting and sewing just stitching the garments uh, uh it helped them uh Uh, to get some position of strength for example like the lead time factor they could control uh they could control the supply chain they could give the buyer a date uh, upon which they would ship it out so we saw the knit industry first getting into the backward linkage industry in the form of like the dyeing units they would set up and also the spinning units which would supply the factories and from then like we saw like in the denim industry in the twill industry uh, uh gradually like uh, people getting into the fabric manufacturing l- like we did uh, so when we started the business in 98 uh, we were the first modern denim mill in bangladesh today there are 45 denim mills in bangladesh uh, making the fabric uh, which is a part of the backward linkage industry and these 45 denim mills combined we cater to almost like 40% of the local demand now when the button manufacturer steps in as a backward linkage uh he also keeps retains one extra dollar into the bangladesh economy and that's where you see the you know the we talk about the reserve growing in bangladesh one of the main reasons is this actually because the rmg sector which is the main exporter out of bangladesh because the backward linkage industries are playing such a big part you will see every year more is retained into the reserve like we are actually retaining more then we are sending out shams uh, you know you explain quite a broadly as to what the um, industry needs in terms of uh, backward linkages and where we have our strengths and where we have our weaknesses uh, in particular can you name something for me that where we ought to develop better backward linkage uh, we have come a long way i know in many many areas uh, can you name something that's a bottleneck for us uh human resource human resource is a very important thing we have developed entrepreneurially but professionally we have not developed like the skill set that needed to be handed down to the uh you know the next level of management did not happen uh so this thing held us back to some extent uh, and also negotiation skill i i need to know that uh what my product is worth now what we don't uh, and this is the problem of the owners the uh, people like me the entrepreneurs now the thing is that when uh, i am selling my product i know what the value of the product is what we don't realize is that once we reduce the price it takes a long time to up the price again uh and the reason that uh uh, uh we see that Uh, you know the exports are increasing in the garment sector but the average price is falling is also because we have planned not in a uh, practical way you know we have expanded we have expanded without taking a lot of factors into consideration so to fulfill capacity to uh, repay the banks we have to take some orders now at lower prices than the actual cost of manufacturing so also the entrepreneurs need to be educated as well as well as the management and also we need to train our managers Uh, the owners they have to uh, they are responsible to train the management you know people the technicians the engineers uh, shams it was uh, wonderful having you today uh, to talk about um, mostly backward linkages but we also talked about some other very very interesting things um always a pleasure having you thank you for your time i'd like to thank our audience for joining us and uh, please try and stay home try and stay safe because these are still very precarious times that we're going through i'll catch you in the next session stay safe bye bye